What's up, one saying? It's your boy Summer Explores back again. I'm here today at Buchanan bus station in Glasgow. And in today's video, we're going to be heading to Scotland's newest city, Dunfermline. And yeah, we're going to see what it's like. My bus is in like five minutes. Of course, I'm cutting it fine as you do. But yeah, let's get this bus and let's head out into Fife. I've headed 70 minutes down the road into Fife to Dunfermline. Home to around 60,000 people, it's the latest settlement in Scotland to be granted city status as part of the late Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee Civic Honours. If you want to learn more about what makes the town a city, check out my video on Dunblane and why even though residents, including some of my mates, call it a city, it technically isn't anymore. In a nutshell, nowadays city status is honorary, meaning there isn't a set of criteria that makes a town a city. Back in the day, like I mean, Buck. Having a cathedral would have got you city status, but not anymore. Towns like Dunblane, Guildford, Middlesbrough and Blackburn might have historically had city status. I don't know, you're going to have to check that out. But they're referred to as cathedral cities for self-evident reasons. City status in recent times has been chosen by the monarch, with 39 settlements applying for city status in 2021-2022. Ulster, Ballymanor, Bangor, Blackburn, Bolsover, Boston, Bournemouth, Coleraine, Colchester, Crawley, Crewe, Doncaster, Dorchester, Douglas, Dudley, Dumfries, Dunfermline, Elgin, Georgetown, Gibraltar, Goole, Greenock, Guildford, Livingston, Marazian, Medway, Middlesbrough, Milton Keynes, Newport and Carisbrook, Northampton, Oban, Reading, Peel, St Andrews, South Ayrshire, Stanley, Warrington, Warwick and Wrexham all apply for city status. And on the 20th of May 2022, Dunfermline Fife was revealed as one of the UK's eight newest cities. To be fair, look at some of the names on here. Some of them had no chance like a biscuit drowning in a mug of tea to become a city. City status comes with a whole raft of perks like an infectious level of clout which you can use to promote your city's one known landmark. You also get to change the council name to City Council. And I don't know, you know, what else? I can't really think of anything. Well, Dunfermline had to change their railway station from town station to city station. Even though some of the signs haven't actually caught up to the times. I wanted to make the most of my first visit to this newish city and have a whole look around and take in the ambiance. A settlement on the site of current Dunfermline has been around since at least 570 AD, with it becoming solidly acknowledged during the 11th century. The settlement was granted royal borough status in 1588 by King James VI, which meant Dunfermline could enjoy trading privileges and could manage its own affairs. Boroughs were eventually abolished in 1975 and replaced with district councils and subsequently local authorities. The city has a palace, well, ruins of one, and an abbey located next to each other which are prominent attractions here in the city. The palace ruins, which were close to the public on the day I went, date from the 11th century and was home to a number of Scottish royals back in its heyday. The better known abbey next door was founded in 1128 and completed in 1250. You can see the vast contrast in the two parts of the abbey, where following the Scottish Reformation in the 16th century, the abbey was basically mashed up and left to ruin. Over the next couple hundred years, attempts were made to repair what was left and in the 19th century, this new part of the church was built. It's here where you find the resting place of Robert the Bruce, one of Scotland's most revered warriors. Robert the Bruce is actually one of 18 royals buried in the city, which includes Queen Margaret of Scotland. And of course, entry's free here. Yeah, yeah. Moving into the late 19th century, the city was essentially put on the map by one Andrew Carnegie, an industrialist turned philanthropist whose name has gone on to ring across the world. Moving to the United States at 13 years old, he went on to found the Carnegie Steel Company, which he sold for around $490 million, which is worth $17 billion nowadays. Carnegie is famed for founding a number of trusts, charities, universities, concert halls, museums, and most notably, libraries. 
The kind gentleman funded over 2,500 libraries across the world, with one of them actually being my local. Carnegie's legacy has been implanted across the world and can be witnessed here at his birthplace museum, which is definitely worth a visit. It's free. Elsewhere, you can see how everything in this city is named after the man. Carnegie this, Carnegie that. It's hard to live in Dunfermline if someone called Carnegie broke your heart in primary school. Even though the man only lived in Dunfermline till his teens, he showed a lot of love to the city, including buying Pitt and Creef Estate on the western edge of the city in 1902, which now has a statue commemorating Carnegie, and donating it to the people as a public park, along with £2.5 million into a trust which is definitely a lot of money nowadays, huh? Aiming to bring more sweetness and light into the lives of the people of Dunfermline. It's like if Beth Jesus went back to Albuquerque, in New Mexico and shelled out most of his money on his birth town, but doing it in a wholesome way, you know? None of this AI and robots and free Amazon Prime deliveries and stuff like that, you know? I would honestly recommend the Birthplace Museum because you learn so much about this man and so much about his generosity. And you see that this man was balling. He was balling. Like, imagine generational wealth times 78. Like, this man was rich. I only had a limited time to look at Dunfermline. And to me, it seems like it's a small city that had a person who really cared about bringing the best fortunes to those living there. Nowadays, some parts might actually need some of that dollar again to revive themselves. Including the shopping centre. Like, my gosh, what has happened to city centre shopping centres in the last couple of years? It's quite a drastic mood changer compared to the very nice high street, which has a spoons with a hotel in it. It's quite easy to get around by foot, and on a sunny day, it actually makes Fife look good. I can't say much really, because I actually went to Fife twice that week, willingly. I'd say that Dunfermline is quite well connected with the rest of Scotland, but it is quite painful at how far the train station is from the city centre. I was walking about 15-20 minutes, you know. The bus station, which is much more convenient, serves a ton, maybe an excessive number of coach stage buses, reaching beautiful places like Edinburgh, Glasgow, Burnt Island, Hill End and Touch. Instead, I went to St Andrews with a cheeky stop off in the lovely Anse Rather for some fish and chips. Woo.
All right, you find me here in St. Andrews, right next to the St. Andrews bus station. I'm gonna head on the bus back into Glasgow, which is in about half an hour. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'll catch you in the next video. It's when you will someone explores. Peace. Whoa.